This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to style forms with CSS. This is a newbie friendly guide. We're not going to get too wild today, but you are going to see a few examples of how to jazz up your forms. I'm going to show you six different stylings today, just to give you a heads up. Those are going to be number one, setting box sizing. Number two, CSS selectors for input elements. Number three, basic styling methods for text input fields. Number four, styling other input types. Number five, UI pseudo classes. And finally, number six, non-customizable inputs. So let's get it started. I'm over here on codepen.io. If you'd like to follow along today, I did put in some pre-coded styles for clarity. As you can see here, I have this ID right here. This is just to make it more visible when you're watching this video, but we are going to be doing a lot of coding today. So I hope you're ready. Let's get into it and talk about number one, box sizing. So by default in the CSS box model, the width and height you assign to an element is applied only to the element's content box. If the element has any border or padding, that is actually added to the width and height to arrive at the size of the box that's rendered on the screen. This means that when you set width and height, you have to adjust the value you give to allow for any border or padding that might be added. The box sizing property can be used to adjust this behavior. So for example, let me add this class. We'll say some class. We'll give it a width of 200 padding 20 pixels. Now, what's going to happen is that this class without the border box is going to have a width of more than 200 pixels, and that's going to be an issue. So to fix that, we're going to select all. We're actually going to add um, the pseudo elements as well, and then we're going to throw in box sizing border box. And now you can see when we set this, the width of this element contains the padding. The second styling we're going to talk about today is CSS selectors for input elements. The easiest way to select input elements is to use CSS attribute selectors. For example, I have three boxes right here. What I would do in my CSS sheet is just type the input. And now this is, as you can see, the input type is text. So I'm going to specify this and now all input elements with type text have been targeted. So if we give it, let's just, let's just go gaudy right now. We'll go a background color turquoise and give it a width of 500 pixels. Then you can see that that makes quite the difference. And we used attribute selectors for that. Now, if we wanted to target this third box, this input type of password, we could also just do that, put input and then in the brackets type equals password. And inside the curly braces, We'll give that a background color of indigo just to make it pop. And then if we needed to specify any selectors, we could just create another class. Number three is basic styling methods for single line text input fields. Now, single line fields are probably the most common input fields used in forms. Usually a single line text input is just a simple box with a border, depending on the browser, but you can use certain CSS properties to make this input field a little more attractive. You can use something like padding or margin to add margin around the input field, a border, box shadow, border radius, width, or font. So let's have some fun with this and we're going to target the input. That'll be a type of text. And then we're just going to open up our styles here, add some padding. We can also add some box shadow. We could do a border radius. And then finally, let's have fun with the font. Go to some mono space. Woo woo. And just with those changes, it just really transformed this otherwise pretty boring input box. But with those additions, looks nicer, looks a little jazzed up. Number four, we're going to style other inputs. Notice here we have text area. What? If you haven't heard of text area, it's really similar to text inputs, except that text area allows multi line inputs. Typically, you'd use these when you want to collect longer form data from users. 
comments, messages, etc. You can use all the basic CSS properties I mentioned previously to style text areas like padding, margin, border radius, box shadow, all that good stuff. So let's go into our CSS and target text area. Let's make this, let's make it poppin'. Let's add a width. If you wanted to resize it to vertical, add some padding, maybe a border radius, border, and do a box shadow. You can also do check boxes and radio buttons, select menus and regular buttons. We have a button right here we can actually target just by typing button and then adding the styles below. Add some padding, border and a background. And you can see again, just a little bit of CSS can totally transform these elements into something really interesting and visually appealing for your users. Number five is UI pseudo classes. Now, pseudo classes are commonly used with form elements. They can be used to show notices based on an element's attributes. For example, if something, if an input box is required, if the user must fill it out, um, if input is valid or invalid, um, checked. And those can be used to create effects on each state. For example, on hover, on focus, on active. Let's take a look at hover. And I, I warn you, I'm gonna make this a little gaudy so you can see the example pretty clearly. Uh, so it's very obvious. It's not the prettiest thing, but this is more to just demonstrate its functionality. So first of all, let's code out our first class, which is type one over in this first input box. And let's just give it some, just a few styles, border radius, a border and a transition. And then on the next line, we'll add the pseudo element. So we'll say type one, and then the pseudo element goes right after it, which is hover. And so when I hover, I want it, I want the border to change colors. So we'll make it gaudy, we'll make it really stand out. We'll add a border 20 pixels solid indigo so that the border is going to be a solid purple with 20 pixels and to demonstrate that we can also do the same thing with the class type 2 and then to type 3 so type 2 will be the same thing and then on the hover we can do a box shadow a different type also going down to the third type here type 3 class We'll add a border and a transition. And then beneath it, we'll add that pseudo element hover. And when I hover over it, it's a light blue. So really giving that feedback to the user with these pseudo classes, very handy, can be very beautiful. Again, I know this example wasn't the prettiest, but just to illustrate how powerful the pseudo classes can be. Now, finally, non-customizable inputs. Styling form elements has historically been a tall order. There are some form elements that we don't have much control over styling. For example, input type color, input type file, progress, option, opt group, data list. These elements are actually provided by the browser and styled based on the operating system. The only way to style these elements is to use custom controls, and those are created using stylable HTML elements like div, span, and so on. For example, when styling an input type file, we can hide the default input and use a custom button. These custom controls for form elements are developed for most major JavaScript libraries. You can find them on GitHub, Google them. So those are some examples of how to style simple form elements. These are the basic building blocks of CSS form styling. Feel free to experiment, have some fun with it, and see what you can come up with because there's so many ways to get creative with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.